It's here folks, the mighty Phoenix 7, finally. I've got here with me a Phoenix 7 solar GPS watch. And um, they have so many varieties. Right now they have the Sapphire Solar, the standard model, and the Epix, which I don't have right now. The Phoenix series does not have an AMOLED display. Whereas the Epix is considered to be almost an exact copy of the Phoenix 7, except with an AMOLED display. This one comes with a transflective display, which is fine. We'll get to that part too. So let's take a look. I can feel that it's already heavier than this guy. This is an unopened uh, Veni 2 Plus. This is a giveaway. I'm gonna give it away. If you wanna take part in the lucky draw, go ahead and watch this video up here, like it, subscribe and comment in that video. And then it, your name will be automatically added to the list. And then in early February, I'm gonna do a raffle and uh, the location does not matter. So comment wherever you are. Okay, so let's take a look. I can feel it's heavier, like I said. Yeah. Hefty watch. All right, guys, here it is. The Mighty Phoenix 7 Solar Edition. This is the 47 millimeter, by the way, not the 51, so it's not 7X. Just look at the size of it. I mean, right here I have, I'm wearing the Venue 2 Plus. And I just want you to see the difference. There it is. It's a massive watch. So to compare with the Veni 2 Plus, you can see the difference in terms of the size. So let's take a closer look on the wrist, see how it looks. Yep, it also comes with quick release uh, straps, just like the Veni 2. I love the straps. I mean, these straps are just super soft, really soft, even softer than these, even softer than the Veni 2 Plus, which is a smaller watch. That's surprising. Wow, take a look at this. I just love this contrast here. They've added this kind of uh, bump around this button right here to sort of protect it from accidental uh, presses and things like that. Definitely feels heavier than this watch, but it still feels quite comfortable on the wrist. All right, so let's see what's in the box. Probably nothing special, just the user manual and a charging cable. I wouldn't recommend to use this you could easily buy a charging dock from Amazon. I'll try to find a link and put it in the description. So try to use that if you can. But otherwise, this is a fantastic looking watch. It, it's packed with a lot of features. What I personally like about this watch are just a few features. First of all, I, I really like it that it's it's got touch screen. That's fantastic. But when you use a watch like this Venue 2 Plus, which has got an AMOLED display, switching back to a transflective display, it feels just kind of weird, to be honest. And I'm not so sure about that. I think I would personally prefer the Epix 2 watch, because that's, one, uh, that's the one that's got the AMOLED display. What do you think? Which one do you prefer, the AMOLED display or the uh, the transflective, the regular Phoenix 7. And also comment down below why, uh, first of all, would you buy this watch and why would you buy it? Like what kind of activity do you do? Why do you think you would need this watch at all? So I'm just interested to know. Getting back to what I love about this watch. So the touch screen is one thing, but also I really like the real life, uh, real time stamina 
And that's a great feature, especially if you do uh, competitive runs and uh, you bike a lot and things like that, because it actually allows you to see in real time how you're overexerting yourself uh, or basically preventing you from overexerting yourself. And that is an amazing feature, in my opinion, especially right in the beginning of your run. The other feature that I really like about this watch is not the GPS, not the map, is the recovery advisory. That's something that uh, I'm looking forward to using as well. So it's basically, it, it checks how you're, if you're ready, whether you're ready for your next heart uh, workout or not. And it takes a lot of things into account, like your stress levels, your, your sleep, your overall activity and things like that. What I don't like about this watch is the price of it. This is definitely an expensive watch. I don't mind the size of it, to be honest. I, I, I think I would mind the 51 millimeter. I think that's a little bit too, much, too big. I personally recommend the 47 millimeter for pretty much everyone, unless you've got smaller wrists than mine. In that case, you should go with the 42 millimeter option. Even I can go with the 42 millimeter option. I think uh, that's got a reasonably, reasonably large display anyways, although that wouldn't affect the thickness of the watch. So it's just the diameter of the watch itself. All right, that's it folks. Subscribe and like the video and comment down below if you would buy this watch and what kind of activity you usually do, why you think you need this watch.